you can see all the little divots the little uh, the little dimples from the sand in the ground you can see just every little stump and little tree welcome back to the channel everybody welcome back to the boat terror of this mythical beast behind me the Skeeter FX 21 so if you watched the last video you saw me picking up the boat from fun and sun a lot of you came out there uh, thank you very much and basically I just kind of showed you a brief overview of the boat and now that I've had a chance to play around with it and uh, there's a lot of bells and whistles on this thing I'm gonna take you guys through each one and we can dive in deep First things that's an upgrade from my last boat is the trailer itself. My last trailer was a, it's like a, a armor coated aluminum trailer, but this one is um, it's not fiberglass. I don't know if it's plastic. That sounds bad to say, but it is the same color that matches uh, one of the main colors on the boat, which is this. Um, I forget what it's called. It's a, like a very deep blue black. It actually has green fleck in it as well. The trailer's probably the most uninteresting part of this, but I, I have to mention it. I mean, it's it's an upgrade from the last boat. So the main difference between the ZX series, which my last boat was, which is like your tournament ready uh, starter boat. I, mean, I wouldn't even call it a starter boat. I mean, it's a tournament ready boat. And the FX series, which is uh, it's like an elite style boat. It's it's uh, more performance in the FX. Uh, there's better uh, weight distribution. The hull design is a little different, uh, just to give you more uh, agility and speed, and then comforts, accoutrements, basically, just better built on the inside, better better layout, and uh, just some, some more bells and whistles. So let's get into the whistles. The seats mega cushiony. My, my other seats are pretty good. Um, these are a little bit more, I would say, wide but certified. Not that I have a super wide butt or anything, but uh, you could sit super comfortably in here, even if you're a big boy. And then you get more color options in the seats. So I picked out all the colors uh, on this boat, you know, saying this is black, this is white, this is gray, this is like a silvery thing. Uh, all that was was picked out, and it almost kind of looks like a like a tuxedo a little bit. It's classy, but then dangerous. James Bondish, baby. Whew. Silver bullet, I like you. Another thing that's different is the cooler. There's no seat to take off here. It's just built in, and that pops up. And then you have a cooler up under there, and then there's uh, there's drink holders right there. So you can get your hydration on while you're doing your dangle. Something I did on my last boat that I, I loved having a routine of is I put a bucket up under the cover so the rain would kind of go over that and the rain wouldn't collect on the boat cover itself since this isn't a dual console, it's a single console. And I would use the bucket as a trash mechanism when I came off the water. It worked out great. I'd sit there, I'd redo tackle, I'd throw the, uh, the trash in the bucket and then I'd dump the bucket and then I'd use that up under the cover. It was a great little system. I lost the bucket, sadly. I don't know where it went, but this has a trash can built in. This should be on every boat. You put it in there, and then you can take that bucket out, this guy out, and you could just dump it. It's easy, super easy. This is pretty much the same, where you got your pliers and scissors and cutters and all that stuff, and same thing with the passenger side over here. But if you look up under here, we do have some bump action. So this, this is the Bluetooth speakers. Uh, they they are connected to a Bluetooth system over here. I'll show that to you here in just a second, but uh, yeah, you can just get your tunes on, bump your tunes. Got your hot foot as usual, can't live without it. And then your console is just way different. The console is uh, it's digital over here, so you have a digital panel. You can turn this on and then basically all of your power is um, separated into little little circuit trees right here and um, one of my favorite things about this boat because you guys have seen this happen on, on videos a lot you turn that and your plug goes in so literally 
you could be at the ramp, you're excited to go get your dangle on, then you back the boat in the water, and you're like, oh crap, it feels heavy. I, I, the bilge pumps are on, I forgot to put the plug in. You just go over there and you, and it's all good. Closes up, builds the water out, and you don't have to sit over there on the bank, reach up under there like you've seen on this channel and I'm sure many of the other Google channels where we forget to put the plug in. Don't have to worry about that with this boat, it's amazing. One of the things I do like is they put a little, a little toter right there for your stuff. You know, I'm always trying to figure out where should I put these little red red things? Should I put them in the boat? Should I put them in, in the truck? Sometimes they get lost. So you've got your, your motor toter and uh, your little clippies to keep your motor from getting out of control and you just put them right there. They're there at the end of the day, right where you need them. Now the rest of the stuff like the graphs and the boxes and the trolling motor, I'm gonna show you guys that on the water. Here we have uh, upgrades on these power poles. These are blades. I guess they cut through the water faster. Uh, they, they look cooler. I mean, they, they essentially function just like my, my last ones though. Actually, this one isn't even going down right now. But I do have a ladder right here. If I just wanna really get crazy, get out there in the water, I, I got myself a ladder. You know, this, these later stages in life where I'm not sure I can get up in the boat, this might come in handy. Some other frothiness we have back here is the Yamaha 250 four stroke. Uh, this is a bigger motor than what was on my last boat. I had a 225 um, and on previous boats I've had 250s. Uh, it's nice to have a little extra power but you know what I kind of like the 225. It was uh, it was good. The only thing that I did not like about the last boat was the balance issue like the uh, I would kind of get a dolphin effect. That, that boat would like to really run fast so I'm hoping that this one is going to have a little bit better weight distribution and I can cruise at slower speeds. Sometimes I just like to cruise man. just like to cruise while I'm trying to catch fish. So one of the other things that's different is the hydraulic jack plate. I've never had one of these. Uh, they come in handy when you're fishing shallow water or you just want more boat control. Uh, motor control where you can really dial in uh, your exact angle of your um, propeller in the water with your tilt and then you can use the hydraulic jack plate to to increase the power even more and maybe even get you up on pad a little quicker uh, by jacking the plate down when you're when you're uh, getting up and doing a little twirl trying to get up down the lake they do it down in Florida quite often uh, everybody has jack plates down there because fish in shallow water so much but never had it I'm gonna enjoy getting to learn um, the aspects of that and then and how to make it better maybe hit less stumps that's always good I've hit a few stumps in my life okay this boat has just got power and bells and whistles for days let's get it in the water though let's crescent it and then I want to get into these graphs so one of my main goals for today is to learn this. This uh, I'm going back to Humminbird units, uh, and I was with uh, Lawrence. I had a Lawrence. I wasn't, I wasn't with Lawrence. It's not like, hey, we were dating. Uh, I just had a Lawrence, and I got used to it. And now I've got these, and I got to get used to those again. And there's so many upgrades. And uh, anyway, it's going to be fun to learn all this together. But there's a lot of knobs, a lot of buttons, and uh, you know, we got to find them fish on that thing. Well, it would appear as if our maiden voyage is going to be a nasty one, y'all. I'm not surprised, but you know what? This thing's gonna be hardened in fires. Wait, I guess that would be like waters, like hurricane waters. So it's not gonna be some nice, like just, you know, a crisp, perfect day and all the fish are jumping in the boat. No, we're gonna start this baby off on the hard train, on the hard knocks. And that way, when it's time to make it count, She's gonna perform. Silver Bullet's gonna be trained for day one. That's my pep talk for the Silver Bullet. All right, y'all. I have uh, already unhooked the motor. This is different than uh, than my last boat because you no, know, I, I could just kind of leave the motor down, and with the hydraulic jack plate, that baby just comes right up. So it's it's not close to the the ground. We're just gonna touch. Start it right up. Don't worry, I'll let you get more. 
Oh my gosh, y'all, this freaking plasma screen in front of me. Crazy. Oh yeah. This hydraulic jack plane is nice, especially when you're at boat ramps or you just want to beach your boat. Like I'm about to do. Woo, it is going to be a choppy one. I definitely want to get that other power pole working. But they are, they're much faster than my other ones. So with having that jack plate, I can really, I don't have to play with my trim as much. It's really nice. Something that's different about this boat, I have to turn on the fuel gauge. And then I actually have a digital readout, an exactitude of how much fuel I have. So I'll just turn that on. And then there's the analog as well. You also get exact readouts of your jack plate and your trim over here. And this is what I'm gonna have to conquer today. Well, not conquer, but at least start getting a hang of. It's always different when you get in a new boat and all the graphs are different and you gotta kinda relearn. So I gotta learn what fish look like exactly here. And supposedly with this unit, this is the Solix, you're actually able to see fish and their shadows. So I wanna be able to dial it in where I know they're bass. One of the reasons I wanted to come out to this lake in particular is just because I've spent a lot of time looking at a graph out here, so I know what things are supposed to look like, and then I can kind of gauge from there where I need to make adjustments on the electronics. I can already tell you this is gonna be a huge learning curve on this thing, but uh, it is crisp, it is gigantic, <laughs> and one of the nice things is you, know, you don't have to have two screens. I would, ne I would never need two screens anyways, but with this guy, there's so many views to choose from. You can have four, four different readouts on the same screen. A lot of information coming into your eyeballs. This baby zips. It's got pop to it. Oh my gosh, you can really, really feel it. Oh man. <laughs> it's super nice having that hydraulic jack plate. I'm, I'm so impressed with that thing. I've never had one. I can't believe it. Um, that just allows you to have a smoother ride and if, if you want to keep the you know the nose of the boat down more you just have a lot more control especially in these waves and I'm just going over white caps white caps going 38 and I'm just taking it easy taking it easy this this boat just has a lot of woo power baby oh I love it okay I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get in on these uh, electronics and see what I'm looking at here and really dial it dial it in and uh, make the adjustments as I'm recording so you guys can see if anything interesting pops up. Starting to get my color palettes and just my preferences dialed in here. It's The mega imaging is incredible. This, this top screen here, the mega imaging on the side, uh, it's, it's impressive, I gotta say. You can see all the little divots, the little, uh, the little dimples from the sand in the ground. You can see just every little stump and little tree. It's crazy. I really have to take some time and get used to this. This is going to be just tremendously helpful this year. I changed this to my old Lowrance color palette just because I was used to that. And this one I turned the frequency down to the 455 just because it has a little bit smoother look. Looks like a little tree clump right there. See, that's crazy. You, you, you see it right there, but you don't even see it on the 2D. Amazing. Well, well we got R2 doing its thing up there. Incredible technology, y'all. Absolutely incredible. I want to show you guys the, uh, the inside digs of the vessel and how I've got the boat set up right now. So the old Skeeter had a couple of lids right here that opened up side to side, and it was a little awkward, to be honest. I like this bigger, just big coffin box style where uh, everything just goes in there. So if we open up the lid, the big lid, you can see that um, all the tackle trays were organized in here. I'm still getting it together, but mostly, uh, mostly all of this is hard bait. So tons of crankbaits, 
I've got my terminal tackle, you know, weights, hooks, things like that. It even has a net in case you're getting a Mondo on the line, you need help. I usually just like to get them with my hands because it's more fun, but um, there's rod storage inside of here. It can hold six rods. I think I'm gonna end up just putting spinning rods inside of this compartment because I don't have that many of them and there's, uh, there's more space down here so that the reels just aren't hitting the ground there. And then, uh, of course, you guys know I got I got Guggen baits all up in there. I've got just some of my my key favorite colors right there, and I'll, I'll probably end up organizing them uh, not in trays like this, but uh, probably little boxes or, or bags, and uh, just leaving them in here because it's just quick access, and uh, I know what I'm looking at. So I love how clean that is. Super clean. These can come right out and then go go back in there so just key elements now for other specialty items I've, I've got a lot of storage going on in this boat so to the right lid box lift that up and then you can actually throw rods in here as well but I'm not gonna do that uh, this is gonna be just specialty stuff where I've got you know some of my my favorite jigs that I like I've got some swim baits in here you know, just, uh, just just key stuff. There is a day box. There's only one day box. I'm, I'm missing one. My other boat had another one right over here, but there's definitely plenty of room to make up for that. So this is uh, this is where I'm just gonna keep like go-to jigs, spinner baits, chatter baits, things like that. And also I keep line usually. So I've got uh, just some 12 pound and some 18 pound in there right now, but I'll probably deck that out with some other line. And then we have the rod arsenal box. This is what everybody gets excited about right here. But honestly, it's it's kind of skimpy at the moment. I'm in the I'm in the middle of uh, getting some some new rods, um, some new favorite rods and stuff. So uh, getting new reels and things like that. So I've kind of got it bare bones. But um, I've got mostly just my I've got my signature series rods in here. I've got a few extras of those. A um, bunch of the big sexies, obviously. That's uh, that's my favorite favorite line of rods that favorite makes currently. Something I think that is incredibly smart that should have been done a long time ago is if you look inside of the box there, there's no carpet at the bottom. There's no carpet in there. They just have the fiberglass and they have some rubber stops so your hooks aren't getting, they're not getting tangled up. I mean, yeah. You get in there, you get all excited, and then you went on a boat ride and your crankbait is daggum just stuck to the bottom of the carpet. And you're trying to get it out and you're fiddling with it and then you're messing with the pliers and you're bending the hooks and then they break and you're like, dead come. This is not how I imagined my dangle when I was dreaming last night. So you don't have to worry about that at all. You can even rinse that out, like saltwater boat. It's got drain plugs in there. Uh, and another nice thing about um, all these skeeters, they have dry docks, which means they have pumps they have pumps that uh, the fans that go into these boxes and they, they dry it out and turn them on. You hit the switch right here, wha-bam. You got air flowing. And then uh, there's an oxygenator button as well for the live wall. Up here, I'm liking this mounting system. This bracket, the only thing is it's blocking my cup holder, man. Can't put my brewski or my water up there when, uh, when I got this thing going on. But it does seem to be, uh, pretty beneficial as far as like standing up and then looking looking down at that angle is perfect and then your foot is totally clear i like that and it's it's even higher off the deck so you get a better picture and that my friends and fishing freaks is the innards of the silver bullet i think i'm gonna try to keep it this simple I usually say that and then I end up just throwing tons of baits in here, but streamlining, I think I think that's important. I got a bigger boat, I got enough room to uh, put some camera gear in here and just uh, and just be able to, to keep it all the same, not take a bunch of stuff out and, and just go out and, and give it a dangle as much as I can and film as many of these videos as I can. Uh, this obviously gets me jacked up to go to go fishing and to go figure fish out with these new electronics and uh, bring that all that stuff that I learned to you guys. So I'm gonna try to give it a dangle here. Maybe try some cranking, catch some fish. Uh, that's not really my goal for today, but uh, now that I'm out here, I got to. Mega imaging, crazy. Very defined, very defined. Just been impressed with that, the rocks. That's pretty neat. I mean, definition in there is awesome. So I'm not catching any fish, but I am getting 
to really explore the lake in a new way with this Solix. So uh, the mega imaging, wow, wow. The crazy thing is like, you really don't even want to stop and fish until you're seeing fish. Where I guess that's a good thing. You know, before I would go like, oh man, that's really good structure. I can see it's it's pretty good. But now you can see the, the structure, you can see the cover, and then you can see the fish inside of it. Uh, and they show up as like little little white deals. Um, I'm still playing around with that, zooming in and stuff like that. But uh, wow, I would say it's a game changer of a unit. Crazy. Can't wait to use this mega imaging to find crappie piles, white bass, uh, of course, brush piles and bass, um, find bedding areas and all sorts of stuff. There's just this great opportunity here. I love it. I think this is a good place to take it in, y'all. I think uh, I think I'm gonna take it in. I'm gonna pop the drone up and uh, just get a little aerial shot of of heading in. It's, it's windy. Um, and the fishing is, is gonna be terrible. There's some fish out deep but stuff, but the water's just murky. It's not good. Um, but I'm gonna take the opportunity to learn the lake a little bit um, and break in the motor. There's a, there's a break in period you actually have to do with the motor so many hours at certain speeds and whatnot. The silver bullet. What's gonna be your PB this year? Are we gonna, are we gonna bust another eight? Oh, eight, nine, hopefully a double dig, y'all. I wanna hit. Texas hard in March and try to get a double digit. All right, y'all. One last cruise. We're taking it in. to go put her in her home for the night cover her up r2 has got it under control here and uh, i think this is where i'm going to leave you guys i cannot wait to do videos this year out of this boat and take you guys along with me uh i want to thank fun and son and skeeter boats again for uh hooking me up with this vessel this is this is outstanding we just got to put a couple of little finishing touches on her spruce her up give her some extra flavor but other than that, it's all good. Y'all already know what to do. If you wanna stay tuned for all the fishing adventures to come out of the new Silver Bullet, subscribe right here and hit the notification so you don't miss a single bite. Thanks for being here, fishing freaks. I love every single one of you, and I'll see you next time.